In lesson six, we're going to talk about linear functions and their slope. A linear function is represented by a straight line. Uh, when graphed and represents an equation, Uh, where the variables have no number exponent higher than 1. Okay, so we're basically we're dealing with uh, things that have two variables in it, or can have one variable, but it's, we're looking at x's and y's for variables, and we've got exponents that are no bigger than 1. Now, in dealing with uh, different types of equations, you've got a couple of general forms that are worth mentioning. Uh, so let me start with standard form, standard form, looks like ax plus by equals c and this is where a, b, and c happen to be whole numbers uh, then we have slope intercept form which is y equals mx plus b it's the one most of us kind of grew up with uh, and in this case m refers to the slope and B refers to the y-intercept. And then uh, the last form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And in this case, we need a slope, which is our m. And then we just need some ordered pair on the line which is where we get the x1 and y1. That's just specifically referring to numbers that are in the slope. Okay. Now, in going back and looking at the three forms, there's kind of pros and cons for each as far as why we would want to learn one form or not. Um, starters, uh, we got standard form, which is considered to be some kind of a pretty form. There's, there's no fractions in it, so it's very easy to work with. And this is probably one of the hands-down best methods to finding intercepts. So if you want to figure out where a line crosses an x or y axis, standard form is, a, is pretty much the best way to get that done. Uh, Slope-intercept form, uh, consequently, that's the one that most of us have seen our whole math lives. And it's one of the easier ones to graph um, because we, you know, we, we pick our the y-intercept, which is typically where the, their starting point, uh, and then we use the slope to generate other points that are on the line. Um, and this is the one that most of us are familiar with, so we, we happen to make this assumption that when asked to write a linear equation, we, we kind of assume it's supposed to be in slope-intercept form, but it's just, like I said, most commonly used, but it is not the only form out there. Now, point-slope form this one, I think of the three forms. This is the one that isn't used enough. Uh, if you go into higher math courses, it, we tend to push this more than the other forms. But this is a great form as far as writing equations go. And again, the rationale here is I, I need a slope in any point on the line. I don't need a specific point like slope-intercept form does. Uh, and then consequently, kind of like slope-intercept form. Uh, it's actually pretty nice to graph with. Uh, whatever point I'm given, I start there, and then I use the slope to generate another set of points. All right, so let's address this idea of uh, slope. So to start off with, I need two points. Um, not a big deal, but I've only got so many colors to play with. All right, so we're going to label the first point x1, y1, and the second point x2, comma y2. And I want to draw a line that sort of connects those two points, straight-ish. And from here, I want to look at uh, two different quantities. So I want to look at that length right there going up and this horizontal length going across. Now in looking at the horizontal length, how do I find the difference, uh, how do I find that length? Well, that's got to be the difference from x2 minus x1. And then this length right here where I'm going up and down, that's got to be the second height minus the first height. 
Okay, so when we talk about slope, talk about slope, which is this we call m, what we are measuring is we are measuring that ratio between the change in the vertical distance over the change in the horizontal distance. Or, to put it in a more formulaic sense, we're doing, um, I'm sorry, y2 minus y1 in the numerator and x2 minus x1 in the denominator. Okay, so some other ways that we might describe something like this. Uh, you might hear that called rise over run. Uh, you might hear it called uh, delta y. Sorry, I've got to be consistent with these colors here. Uh, delta y over delta x, which uh, is fancy science terms. And a lot of the deltas you'll see in a science course typically. Um, but what that physically means, as we're looking at the change in y over the change in x. Okay, now in, in looking at uh, slope, there's really only four different flavors of slope that we can ever encounter. So there's four main types. Uh, we can encounter what's called the positive slope, the negative slope, the undefined slope, and the zero slope. Okay, now, what makes a positive slope positive? Well, sort of the rationale that I like to think is most people in the world are right-handed. I'm a lefty, but most people are righties. And if you take your right hand and you raise it up, go ahead and do that now. Uh, no, no, you haven't done it yet. I'm kidding. Uh, so if you go ahead and take your right hand and you raise it up and you put your left hand down, you generate what's called a positively slope line. Uh, it's got uh, the y values are going bigger as the x values go bigger. Uh, sort of reverse of that, if your left hand, you put your left hand up and your right hand down, uh, you generate what's called a negative um, slope. Uh, undefined is if you look at a flat vertical line. Uh, you, so in other words, if there's only changes in y, uh, y values but no change in x, that's undefined. And if you uh, look at a flat horizontal line, you end up getting a, a zero sloped line. Okay, so for each of the following examples, we're going to uh, take the two points we're given, we're going to use the slope formula to find the slope, then we're going to plot the points and draw the line that contains those two points. So find the slope first, then find the, uh, the line. Okay, and I don't need that direction, so I kind of scroll up there. Okay, so our slope formula would be and I like to set up what's called the naked step, just put a formula down with a bunch of blanks in it so I can come back and fill in my numbers. Um, I want that to be my first point and that point to be my second point. So it's 2 minus a negative 4 and it's negative 4 minus 6. Uh, and then I'll just work that out. So 2 minus a negative 4, that gives me 2 plus 4, so I got a 6 up top and that gives me negative 10. So I got a negative 3 force for that slope. So I'm expecting the slope to be a negative, um, which means left hand high, right hand down. So if I plot those two points, uh, 6, negative 4, so it's over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. And negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 2. So very carefully try to connect those two points. Uh, so it does match what I expect it to be. I expect it to be negative, and it happens to graphically fit that. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the next two. Uh, so set up the formula. Set that to be my first point. Sorry, that to be my second point. So 4 minus 4 over 2 minus a negative 3 gives me 0 on top of 5, but 0 reduced divided by 5 is still 0. So a 0 slope uh, should be a flat horizontal line. So if I plot those points, 
So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and two, four, and yep, does match what I expect it to be. So at least I'm on a roll. And then our last example, uh, we'll label that as the first, that is the second. So it's two minus five, uh, one minus one. So we get negative three over zero. And if a zero is div on the denominator, so if I'm dividing by zero, that's undefined. So that sh this should look like a vertical line of some type. So come over here. One, two, three, four. Let's see. I lost track. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two. So if I connect those two points, I do get, uh, well, theoretically, I get a vertical line there. Uh, there's a lovely, uh, it's called a mnemonic device. A mnemonic device is just a learning tool to help us associate a series of facts in a clever and memorizable way. Uh, so two of those equations uh, fit under what's called the Hoivux scenario. So Hoivux, uh, it kind of sounds like I'm coughing and someone should say, bless me. Um, but Hoivux helps us remember horizontal and vertical lines and how to find these so slopes associated with that. So the HOI stands for horizontal. Uh, the OI, the, the O stands for zero slope. And the Y stands for Y equals. So if I look at all horizontal lines, I'll have that flat line, the slope is zero, and it's going to be some Y equals, some sort of number, you know, whenever I figure out what number that crosses the Y axis at. A uh, VUX uh, stands for vertical lines, have an undefined slope, and the equations look like all x equals. And you can kind of see that, uh, yeah, we're looking at a vertical line, and if I can figure out that point right there where it crosses the x-axis, then I can write the equation of that particular line. Alright, so if I want to graph uh, a line using a point and its slope, uh, the process is, the first thing is plot the point. Every point I'm getting, go ahead and plot it, x comma y. And then I'm going to use the slope to find another point. And in my head, I want to kind of associate that the numerator is the rise, it's the up, and the denominator is the run. That's the over. It's the left to right part. Uh, and then, step three is to connect the points with a straight line uh, using arrows at both ends. Okay, so let me kind of model this here for you. Uh, let's first plot the point um, 1 comma negative 2, so 1 comma negative 2 there. And then from that point, I want rise of 3, run of 5. So I want to go up 3, 1, 2, 3. And I want to go run 5. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there happens to be another point on my line. So I just want to carefully connect those two points. All right. Uh, the second example, uh, it's got a slope of 0, and it goes through 1, negative 2. So I want to plot 1, negative 2 again, like that. And a run of 0 says it's a flat horizontal line. So everything goes horizontally from it. So all of those are good points on that line. And I just want to come in and plot those lines. Uh, and then the third case, slope's undefined. So now we're talking about a vertical line. Plot the point. This time, I'm going to go vertically from that initial point, And all of those red dots are points on that line. And I just want to connect them. 